Does your Ninebot Max wheel sound like this? You hear that squeaking and that bearing sound? It's got a bad bearing. Still rolls pretty good, but under load, it squeaks a lot. Let me show you how to replace it. Alright, like I say in all my videos, this may or may not be the easiest way or the right way, um, but it will work. So, got a pretty noisy bearing here. Need a few tools. Um, this is just a number three Allen. And I like to use a utility knife blade for taking things like this off. Because if you're careful, you can do it with no damage. Sorry about the noise, I'm doing this in the great outdoors. Okay, so there's one. Now there's uh, two plugs on each side, so just take those out. And then there's a third hidden screw. Um, I'll show you in just a second here. Here and there, pretty good. You can also use a pick for this, like an angled pick. But a knife works pretty good, and everybody usually has one of these lying around. And then for this, the knife works best for the sticker. So go like this, try not to touch the back side of it. That way you can re-adhere it. And there's the final Allen. All those out. Now this housing's held in with clips. You don't even have to take those out if you don't want to. You can just unclip the front or the back. This side comes apart pretty easy, I find. And you just need enough room to get a box end wrench in there. It's a 15 millimeter. Moving you guys around. Ooh, she's a tight one, that one. Don't use palm as hammer. And you also don't have to disconnect your brake at all. You can just leave that on. And we're going for easy, working in the outdoors. Uh, one thing to make note of is there is a spacer on the non-brake side. Um, so make sure it doesn't fall off. So once you've done the same to the other side, you can go ahead and pull this up. You rotate. Once you lift it up just a little bit, you can rotate the brake backwards like this, and it'll just sort of pop right out. You don't have to remove any of this. You can just slide this right off of here. And again, there's a spacer here. Be careful. That goes on the non-brake side. So don't lose the spacer. Put it aside. And we can see... Ooh. really bad bearings. Really bad. If you can hear that. So now we just need a couple blocks of wood and a hammer and uh, some careful. I'll show you that. So I have this just sitting on the vise here. Um, it's resting on the bottom. Now you may want to be careful not to mar it. You couldn't put it also between two pieces of wood like this if you like, if you don't have a vise. Okay. <clears throat> Having a few pieces of wood and some sockets and stuff is going to be necessary for this process. And then, tap, tap. Comes out pretty easily. And you could drift that out either side you want, because all it's going to do is take the bearing out. Now, that bearing's still good. So that's, or at least driving it out. It's got some play, which is probably okay, but it feels still decent. So it must be this one. Oh yeah, that's the one. Can you hear that? That's a bad bearing. So now I'm gonna flip it over. And I'm only using the, I'm not clamping it in the vise, I'm just using the vise to hold it. And I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna drive the, the other bearing out. Now we're not worried about damaging these bearings, but we are worried about obviously damaging the housing. I'm just gonna use a, 
a socket extension, uh, which you shouldn't do with damages these, but this one's been sacrificed for drifting things and whatever. We'll put it on the bearing, tap that bearing out. It's that easy. This is not a difficult, not a difficult procedure to take apart. So there's your uh, wheel assembly for the front 9 volt max, and there is the bad bearing. And this is still a good bearing. So now what I'll do with this good bearing is I'm gonna place it on here. I'll be very careful always of the threads. You don't wanna hit the threads with anything it's other than wood and you don't wanna hit them hard. You might have to give them a slightly good tap sometimes, but let's be careful here. So I'm not gonna clamp that in because I, don't, again, don't wanna mark up the shaft. So I'm just going to go like this, you can see. That's where the shaft dug into the piece of 4x4, four four. and you can use 2x4, four, 4x4, four four, whatever you got, just a scrap chunk of whatever wood. Now just make sure we have room to drift this. Yeah, there is. So I'm just going to use some paper towel here, or shop rag, whatever you have. Clean that up. Okay, and we're going to do the, um, the assembly in the exact, uh, in the exact reverse. So pretty uh, pretty straightforward. Clean this up, clean up your the inside where the outer race goes with the wheel. That's nice. And that'll be it now. Uh, time to get the replacement bearings. They're a nice bearing. Uh, they're an SKF. I got them from uh, Napa. Here's the thing with these bearings is you can upgrade now at this point or you can just use a good quality bearing like this or you could put crappy bearings back in it the choice is yours basically just friction fit didn't even have to tap it so uh all right uh let's check the other side and see yeah same thing so they've got pretty generous tolerances on this so i'm actually going to do it a little bit differently then i'm going to start with the wheel Start with the wheel side, and uh, I'm going to mount the, um, you can actually mount these either way, this this particular bearing, because the seal is the same, but sometimes they'll have an, an outer. I'm going to mount it so the writing and stuff is on the outside, so if someone services this in the future and they don't know what size bearing it is, they can easily find out. Okay, so we're just going to use our block of wood here, and make sure you're driving it um, uh, square into the bore. If you see it starting to go a little crooked, you can change directions literally that easy um, it's just stupid so now the short side of the shaft will go in this way now if you didn't reverse you'd put the long shaft in but just make sure the long shaft ends up upward so I was just able to push that in if that didn't go in you can either put this down on something flat now again like your vice and make sure it's it's all the way on the, the bearing and push it in or you could have put the uh, bearing on the shaft first. It really makes no difference. So now I'm going to support the bearing properly. So it's not going to be have any weird weight on it, but I'm not going to put the vise down on the threads because that'll damage them. And if you're worried about doing that, you can wrap a cloth around them. Now, normally what you can do is you could take a real thick piece of pipe that will push both on the inner and outer race of the bearing. So this being the inner, this being the outer. And uh, that again is how the manufacturer wants you to do it. I'm going to install this bearing again. Writing side out. But because I know it goes on the shaft easily, I'm just going to be really gentle, make sure that shaft's centered. And I'm only gonna tap on the outer race. And I'm barely, barely tapping. This is a real gentle. Here it go all the way in, that was it. Now, there is, you just wanna make sure that these are flush now, and the shaft's in. It spins beautifully, so that's bearing replacement. Um, if I wasn't explaining it, and if I had my socket sitting here, which I didn't, it's 30 seconds, 45 seconds, you could probably race the clock at this. This is incredibly, incredibly easy to change. Just make sure when you're putting the bearing in, double, triple check that you have your uh, long side of your shaft on the on the brake side and uh, very very much protect your threads uh, 
and that's it. Super, super easy. So it is absolutely in all the way and ready to roll. Let's go put this back on the scooter. Okay, so to reinstall it back on the scooter, um, this is super easy. So make sure that your wheel assembly is, is clean. This gives you a good chance now to give it a, a good clean. And it shouldn't be a problem now that we have the more waterproof proper bearings in here. Okay. You can inspect your brake for any wear. And watch this cable. You don't want to bend that cable too hard. You just kind of want it to just flop around at the very, very most. All right, put your spacer in on the non-brake side. That just sits right there. And you'll notice on the bottom of the brake is that notch I was talking about earlier. And there's a pin right down here. So when that's put together, that needs to be on the pin. But we start by bringing it up sideways like this. Sliding it on. Super, super easy. Um, and then bringing this down. And now as you put this on the fork, okay, the shaft is uh, has flat ends on it that go into the fork. Rotate the shaft here on the on the wheel so the flat parts are on either side of the fork and they can pock it down in it. And then as you slide it down, turn your brake so it lines up on that pin. And that's it. Make sure it's down all the way and, and double check that that pin is sitting in the bottom of that um, groove on the brake. Now I'll take some blue thread lock sealant and put a little dab on each of the a big dab on each of the bolts side of the shaft it's pretty hot out so this stuff is runny and gave it a good shake even off camera now again we can i don't pop this bother popping this right off it's not necessary but you can if you need to get a, a socket on it it's just clips on both the front and the back uh, i just find anytime you take a plastic clip apart you risk breaking it so if i can avoid it i do don't want to flex that plastic hard either so you know use your own uh, use whatever you feel comfortable with doing that this is more of a you know than an ultimate guide it's more of just an easy sort of show you the best way to do it that I find so now that's now that those are on there take our 15 millimeter wrench I'm sure there's a torque spec for this and I'm sure it's not able to be found anywhere so um, that's one nice reason for the Loctite. So I like going pretty tight on these. But you don't want to go total gorilla. You will have to take these off again, right? So. There we go. So those are snugged up. And now's a good chance to check your wheel spin, which is awesome. It's funny, it doesn't even look like it's spinning in the camera. Oh, now it does. When it was going fast, Yeah, right now it is spinning fast, but it doesn't look like it. That's kind of cool. Anyway, um, and check your brake. Now your brake should have a little bit of free play, but not too much. Okay, so this is a good chance to uh, adjust your brake if it needs it. All right, now we'll snap this back together in the front. There's zero noise from that.
So that is how you do the front wheel bearings on the 9-bot Max. Uh, honestly, it's super, super easy. It's, um, you know, it's a shame that they use uh, pretty crappy bearings in there because this thing doesn't even have quite a thousand kilometers on it. And it's been only ridden really on streets, nice, nice. But it is not a very good bearing. Now, I will be doing another video, probably won't be out for a couple months, on doing the rear bearings on the 9-bot Max. Uh, mine doesn't necessarily need them right now, uh, but if they're the same brand of bearing that were on it, uh, it will soon. So uh, keep an eye out for that video. We'll do the rear um, the rear bearings on the 9-bot Max and uh, my easiest way that I found to do them. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to like and subscribe, share to other people who have maybe a 9-bot Max and uh, hope you learned something.